Uh, now, Commissioner, because the same witness from UE is responding both to Ms Murphy's case and Mr Sutton's case, uh, I'll now call Mr Glenn Sutton. Yes. Mr Sutton, could you come into the witness box and if you wouldn't mind just remaining standing a moment while I ask first whether you'd uh, prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? An affirmation, please. Affirm the witness, please. I solemnly and sincerely. I solemnly and sincerely. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Sutton. Do sit down. Yes, Ms. Orr. Now, Mr. Sutton, could you please state your full name? Uh, Glenn Wayne Sutton. And you live at an address in Cannonvale in Queensland that's known to the Commission? That's correct. Um, what is your occupation, Mr Sutton? I'm a business owner and a part-time ferry deckhand. Thank you. And have you been issued with a summons to attend and give evidence today? I have. Do you have that summons there? I do. I tender that summons, Commissioner. The summons to Mr Sutton, Exhibit 6.331. And Mr Sutton, have you made a witness statement to the Commission dated the 20th of June 2018? I have. Do you have that statement there? I do. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? They are. I tender that statement. The statement of Mr Sutton of 20 June 18, that's exhibits, exhibit 6.332. Now, um, Mr Sutton, you said that you live in Cannonvale. Can you explain to the Commission where Cannonvale is? Uh, Cannonvale is uh, an adjacent suburb to Airlie Beach. And how long have you lived in the Airlie Beach area? Uh, almost 10 years. And how long have you lived at your current address? Um, since 2014, so about four years. And can you describe your house in general terms for the Commission? Um, the house is a, a two-storey metal-clad house with um, a metal roof. Uh, you have home insurance with UE, Mr Sutton? I do. And approximately when did you take that insurance out? Um, shortly after we purchased the home. Okay. Now, I want to ask you some questions about your experience with Tropical Cyclone Debbie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tropical Cyclone Debbie came through Cannon Vale in March 2017. That's correct. And how long did the cyclone last? Um, it was a long time, very slow moving cyclone, uh, in more than 30 hours, probably 32 or 34 hours. And where were you when the cyclone hit? Uh, my wife and I were at home. Uh, and did you stay at your home throughout the cyclone? Uh, no, we had to leave. Where did you go when you left your home? Uh, we went to a neighbour's house. Now, was there a break in the cyclone at some point? Yeah. Um, Debbie is the second cyclone I've been through and I was familiar with the quiet time of the eye of the cyclone. And um, we, we got out of the house shortly after the eye. We went out and assessed the house. You went out and assessed the damage to your house? Yes. Okay. And what did you see when you looked at your house at that point in the eye of the cyclone? Um, we noticed that um, part of the front bedroom roof had been blown off we knew something had happened because we could hear it going on from inside the house. So part of the front bedroom roof had blown off, you That's could correct. see that. Uh, and did the cyclone then start up again? Yes. Uh, and did you go back to your neighbour's house at that time? That's correct. And after the cyclone cleared, did you go back to your house again? Yes, we did. And what did you observe about the condition of your house at that time? Um, when we went upstairs to look at the bedroom, the bedroom was completely inundated with water. Um, the ceiling had collapsed. The water had flooded through the top part of the house and gone through into the kitchen and the living room in the bottom part of the house. Now, following the cyclone, uh, did your wife contact UE to make a claim under your home insurance policy? Yes, she did. Uh, and you've been dealing with UE about your insurance claim ever since? <laughs> yes. Uh, now, I want to ask you about three aspects of your dealings with UE over that period. Your dealings with UE about make safe works at your house, mm -hmm. your dealings with UE about repair works to your house, and your dealings with UE about temporary accommodation. Uh, now, I want to deal with the topics in that order, but before I do, uh, were you able to live in the house after the cyclone damage? Uh, no, it was evident that there was so much water inundation. The power had been uh, cut off. 
um, we knew there was no possible chance of us living in the house. And the cyclone was in March last year. We're now in September 2018. Have you been able to move back into your house yet? No. Now, I want to start with your dealings with UE about make safe works after the cyclone, um, Mr Sutton. A few days after the cyclone, did UE organise for some men to come and do make safe work at the property? That's correct, they sent two men. Two men? And did you meet them at the house? I did. Uh, and after they had looked at the damage, did they say anything to you about the nature of the damage? Yes. Uh, once they got into the house and they looked around, they realised that the house was more damaged than they had been probably been informed. They had only been allocated eight hours for make safe, and they said there was no way they could do what necess was necessary in eight an eight-hour period. Um, so, what did they do while they were at the house? Just a general clean-up. They removed the ceiling that had collapsed from upstairs, um, moved it to a downstairs area and piled it in the living room. Okay. Uh, now, did they put a tarpaulin or any other covering over the hole in the roof? Uh, no. I'm sorry? No. No. Uh, and did they do any drying work uh, to dry out the water that had come into the house? No, the house was still very wet. Did they deal with the carpets in the house in oh, any no, way? No, the carpets were untouched. Um, what did you think about the work that they did? Oh, I think it was very inadequate and insufficient. Now, more than a month later, did some more workers go to the house to do further works? Yeah, more work was carried out. They removed some more plasterboard. Uh, so on that occasion, they removed plasterboard in which part of the house? Um, further um, plasterboard in the upstairs living area and in the downstairs living, living and kitchen area, and general tidy up of what they'd done, but nothing substantial. Did they do any drying work to dry out the water that uh, was still no, in the house? No, there was no drying done whatsoever. Uh, now, somewhere around this time, did someone come and put a tarpaulin over a, the hole in the roof? Yes, at some stage. Because we couldn't live in the house, I don't know exactly when it was put up, but it was sometime within that first month. And did the tarpaulin stop rain getting into the house? When it was first installed, it was, uh, it was sufficient, but um, the way it was installed wasn't done very well and it didn't last very long. How long did it last, Mr I'm not Sutton? sure, but only weeks. Uh, once we had a bit of wind, the tarpaulin was torn to shreds and water was pouring back into the building. Did you tell Yui that the tarpaulin was not stopping further rain from getting into the house when and, yes, you were I, aware of that? I told them several times with phone calls and emails. And did you ask them to replace the tarpaulin? I did. Um, approximately how many times do you think you asked them to replace the tarpaulin? It would have been more than five times. Now, by November 2017, about eight months after the cyclone, had the tarpaulin been replaced? No. What was the state of the tarpaulin at that time? Uh, it was actually tattered to ribbons. There was almost nothing left. Now, did your wife visit the house in late November 2017? Um, yes, we would attend it regularly to see whether anything was happening. Uh, and do you recall receiving uh, a telephone call from your wife while she was at the house in late November 2017? I did receive a phone call from um, my wife. She was in tears and quite distraught. She was uh, actually videoing the water pouring through what, what was the hole in the roof into the upstairs bedroom area, through the floor and the ceiling below into the kitchen, pouring all over the kitchen. Uh, um, what was the impact that you observed of that on your wife? Oh, she was very distressed um, to the point I sent Yui an email asking them never to contact her again. Now, um, the email that you sent to Yui is annexed to your witness statement. It's Exhibit 1, YOU 0001-0005-2619. Yeah. Um, that will come up on the screen. So this is a copy of the email that you sent to Yui on the 28th of November last year? Uh, that's correct, it is. Uh, and we see towards the end of the first paragraph that you said, my faith in Yui as an insurer has plummeted to zero. That's correct. You said, 
I feel that we have been abandoned by UE. Yep. Uh, and that the situation was totally and absolutely unacceptable. Correct. This was your email uh, to UE on the 28th of November last year. Yeah, that's correct. Now, when was the tarpaulin finally replaced, Mr Sutton? Um, I'm not sure of the exact date, but it would have been after this email. You tell us in paragraph 18 of your statement that UE did not arrange for the tarpaulin to be replaced until January this year. Is yes, that correct. correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and what was the effect of the tarpaulin not adequately covering the hole in your roof throughout that period? Uh, every time we had rain, um, it would pour through and, and create more damage to the, um, to the building. It was just uh, not acceptable. Uh, did you have problems with mould in the house as a result of this? Yeah. The minute you walked into the house, you could smell the mould. You could see the black mould growing on the walls and the ceiling. Now, I want to now move to asking you some questions about your dealings with UE, um, not about the, the works to make your home safe after the cyclone, um, but about the works that needed to be done to repair the damage to your house. Okay. Now, I want to take you back to the weeks following the cyclone. Mm -hmm. In those weeks, did some builders come to inspect the property uh, and prepare reports? Uh, Yui sent several builders um, to have a look at the work and, I assume, prepare quotes. Uh, did you meet the builders at the house? I met some of them, yes. And did the builders say anything to you about the size of the job? Yeah, all of them had mentioned that the job was way too big for them. Uh, they were only looking for small, quick in and out jobs and they said it was way too big. Did any of the builders say anything to you about whether an engineer should be involved? Yeah, in fact, the last one that, that came said that we needed an engineer and possibly even a consultant to um, come and inspect the property. Did you ever receive any quotes from those builders for the repair works? Uh, no, nothing. Then in May 2017, did you get an email from a building company attaching a building contract and a scope of works for the repairs to the house? I did. Now, the name of that building company is subject to a non-publication direction, so I'm just going to refer to that building company as the builder. Okay. Um, you've exhibited the email from the builder and the attachments to that email to your statement as Exhibit 2, um, RCD 00240017002. Now, this is the scope of works that you received, is that correct? Ah, oh, that's correct. Now, if we turn to the following page, 0003, we see the part of the scope of works that dealt with the roof. Do you see that? I see that. Uh, the scope of works said, replace roofing battens, 60 lineal metres, refit flashing on side of house by damaged bedroom. Correct. Did you have any observations about this aspect of the scope of works, Mr Sutton? Yeah, well, that's totally insufficient. The entire roof needed to be replaced on that front section alone. Um, did you have any background in dealing with roofs yourself? Yes, many years ago I worked for a metal roofing manufacturer. I started off in a factory manufacturing roofing and then worked into the sales team uh, as a representative. So I, my background in roofing was, was quite knowledgeable. Uh, and did you raise your concerns about the adequacy of the scope of works insofar as it related to the roof with UE? Yes, I phoned them and told them that that, that quote was insufficient. And did UE then arrange for a builder to inspect the roof and prepare a report? So they did. And were you provided with a copy of that report? I did get a report, yes. Did you read the report? I did. And what were your views on that report? Um, I was actually disgusted. Um, it was totally inadequate. Um, I then voiced my concern with Yui about my concerns. Now, if we um, deal with the inadequacies of that report first, uh, 
in what way did you believe it was an inadequate report? Um, in my observation, from what I could see of the roof of the house, um, almost all of the roof was completely uh, and affected by the cyclone. I could see parts of it that were buckled and twisted and bent and screws removed um, that they didn't even mention in that report. Okay. Um, now, you said you raised your concerns about that report with UE. I did. And what did UE say? Um, UE told me if I had any concerns that I should be, uh, phone the builder and talk to him myself. And did you do that? I did. And what did the builder tell you about the work that he'd done to prepare that report? <coughs> I asked him in his, um, in his compiling of the report, what did he find about the structural integrity of the roof or the internal roofing system? And he told me he, couldn't, he, he hadn't done that. He didn't get into the roof and have a look. So he said he had no comment on that. He hadn't got into the roof to That's have a look? Is that what you said? That's correct. Were you surprised by that? I was totally shocked because uh, I would have thought that if someone's preparing a report on the structure of the roof, they would have needed to inspect it to make sure that it was, it was um, whether it was safe. Um, after that, did you ask UE to organise an engineer to have a look at your roof? Uh, I did. And why did you request that? Because I was unhappy with the report from the builder. Um, I asked for an engineer originally and they sent a builder, which I thought was inadequate. Then when I rang them the second time, they I had organised an engineer. And did UE this time arrange for an engineer to become involved? Yeah, they did. And were there some delays in UE providing you with a copy of the engineer's report? Yes, there was um, some three or four weeks, maybe a little longer, before the engineer uh, was able to come because I assume he was busy, uh, which I understood. And then there was another three or four or five weeks again that took him to compile the report and send it into UE. So there was a six or seven or eight week delay. Uh, but you ultimately received the engineer's report? Yes. Did you read it? I did. And what was the engineer's conclusion about the roof? Uh, the engineer uh, agreed with me and, and said that the entire roof was uh, damaged and needed to be completely replaced. Now, after that, did UE send you an updated scope of works for the repairs? Uh, they did. Uh, and did that provide for the entire roof to be removed and that, replaced? That's correct. It, it had been added in. And did you and your wife then sign a contract with the builder um, for works to remove and replace the roof? Uh, to do the work, yes, that's correct. Uh, and you've exhibited to your statement as Exhibit 3 a copy of the signed contract, the updated scope of works, and your email to the builder attaching the signed contract. Is that right? That's correct. Now, did the contract provide a commencement date for the works? No, there was no date of commencement. Did it contain a completion date for the works? Uh, no. Um, did UE or the builder give you a start date for the repairs? Uh, no. You signed the contract in August 2017? Correct. Um, by October 2017, had the repair works started? No, nothing had happened. How did you feel about that, Mr Sutton? Uh, again, totally disgusted. Um, I understand that there was probably a lot of action going on, but all we needed to be was informed and they told us nothing. It was up to us to chase them every single time to get answers. Did you email UE to express your frustration? Many times. Now, you've annexed one of your emails as Exhibit 4 to your statement, um, YOU 0000050334. You sent this email to UE, we can see, on the 9th of October 2017. That's correct. And in the second paragraph, you said, we are sorry to say that we have lost all faith in UE Insurance and your appointed builder. And you then set out some reasons why. That's correct. And you said, first of all, it has been almost 200 days, six and a half months since our home was destroyed by Cyclone Debbie. Our house was inundated by water. We have been displaced and we are trying to run several businesses without an office. We have tried to find alternate furnished accommodation without any luck. You then went on to say, upstairs the carpet was completely soaked, ruining the timber floors and that carpet is still in place today. The mould ridden carpet should have been removed by now. 
The house and garage stinks of mould and we are extremely concerned of the consequences of returning to the house in this state. That's correct. And then over the page at 0335, you said in the second last paragraph, we both understand that we are not the only ones waiting for work to commence, but we feel that there is a massive lack of communication. Just last week, I called the builder to find out where he was at with the commencement of our house. When I called, the builder said he did not have his diary with him and he agreed to call me in a day or two to arrange a site meeting. I am still waiting for the phone call a week down the track. And then in the last paragraph you said, so where to from here moving forward? As such a long period of time has passed since the devastation, I think we need fresh eyes, a new approach, a rethink on how we get this train wreck back on the rails. We still worry about the repercussions of a complaint <coughs> such as this one. However, as business owners and operators, um, both Julie and I embrace any complaints we receive as it helps us understand our customers' needs and makes for a better business and makes us better people. I'm sure that UE understands this concept and would likewise embrace this business culture. We await your reply. That was the email that you sent to UE on the 9th of October 2017? That's correct. Now, you had a holiday planned to New Zealand in November, is that right? That's right. Had the works started by the time you left on that holiday? Uh, no, it hadn't. We had hoped that it would have started or uh, on the precipice of starting, but it hadn't started. And coming up to that holiday, did Yui tell you that the roofing contractor was doing another job in Airlie Beach that had turned into a big job? Apparently the builder of the roofing contractor that was meant to do our roof had been channelled off to do another job in Airlie Beach and that ours was put back again. Did you think that the repairs would commence while you were away? I was hoping they would, yes. And when you returned home from New Zealand, had the works commenced? No, nothing. Had anyone from UE contacted you about the repairs? No. Uh, and in November 2017, did you also get an email from the loss assessor at UE about some issues with termite damage to the house? Yes, I did. Uh, and you've annexed that email to your statement. It's Exhibit 5, YOU 0001 0001 0273. Um, now, this is the email you got from UE on the 17th of November last year? Uh, yes. Now, UE had previously mentioned the termite damage to you, is that right? Uh, yes, we had discussed that. But UE um, told you in this email that you would need to fix the termite damage before they would commence the repairs. They did. Uh, and what did you think of that? Well, I was quite taken aback. I mean, the delays for weeks and months had far outweighed and outstripped the cost of a few hundred dollars to replace some, some battens that were eaten by termites. It was, it was just crazy. Did Yui also raise in this email um, the possibility of cash settling your claim? Yeah, I didn't even ask for it. I just got that out of the blue and that, that shocked me. And so what did you think of the proposal of cash settlement? Well, I, I was completely taken aback. They did not discuss that with me about taking a cash settlement on a part of the building. I was, um, I was totally shocked. Now, at this point, did you decide to hire someone to assist you with your dealings with UE? Yes, my wife had heard that um, there were other people in the area having trouble, and um, she had heard that a company called Solve My Claim, a Mr David Keane, um, who she contacted and we engaged David to um, act on our behalf. And why did you do that? We were totally fed up with Yui. We'd had enough. I'd sent, at this point, the emails were in the many hundreds of emails backwards and forwards and we felt like we were getting nowhere. Um, and with David's expertise, we were hoping that we could get some, uh, get some progress. Now, um, did David suggest to you that you engage a microbiologist to provide an expert report on the mould in the house? Yeah, it was evident when he came for a site meeting that he said that there's mould in here, we knew that. 
and he uh, he had said that we needed to get somebody in to check the the mould situation. And did he also suggest that you engage an independent building consultant to provide a report on the repair works that were required? Yes, that's correct. Uh, did you do both of those things? Yes, we did. And what was the cost to you of doing both those things? Um, the microbiologist report and the building consultant report, both of which were very comprehensive, were uh, almost $10,000. Now, has the um, person you engaged, David, um, been engaging with UE on your behalf since that time? Yes, many times. Now, I want to come back to the stage that things have now got to with the repairs to your house. Um, but before I do that, I want to ask you some questions about the third topic I mentioned, um, which is uh, your dealings with UE about temporary accommodation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, since the cyclone, have you and your wife been living in temporary accommodation? Oh, we have, yes. And how many times have you moved in that period? Uh, we're in our fourth uh, rental accommodation now. And why has it been necessary for you to move so many times? Um, several reasons, but the main one is Yui had um, given us an indication that we should only take short-term accommodation because if we took a long-term lease anywhere and the building was finished, that we would be responsible for that lease and we would have to pay for it. Did Yui assist you to find the temporary accommodation? Uh, no, they didn't. How difficult has it been to find temporary accommodation in the Early Beach area? Well, as you can imagine, there are a lot of construction workers that have come from out of town. They've filled most of the rental accommodation that's available, if it wasn't already damaged by the cyclone. Um, we needed a furnished uh, house because we have uh, had no furniture. It was completely destroyed. We also have two small dogs. So to find a furnished house that would accept animals was very difficult. Has Yui reimbursed you for the costs of your temporary accommodation? Uh, yes, they have. How, can you explain how the payment arrangements for the temporary accommodation work? Yes, it was our responsibility to find the accommodation, um, pay the bond, pay the rent in advance and make the re uh, weekly payments. And then we were to send an email every fortnight to Yui so that we could be reimbursed. Uh, now, how long after you provided your emails to Yui um, did it generally take for Yui to reimburse you for the rental payments? Uh, in the beginning, it was um, the first couple came reasonably quickly within a couple of weeks, but then it started to string out and string out, and there were periods of time there where we were months behind in our, oh sorry, they were months behind in reimbursing us. You tell us in your statement that in September last year, you were waiting to receive reimbursement of $5,200 for invoices that included one that was over 50 days old? That's correct. What has been the financial impact on you and your wife of being out of pocket while you were chasing Yui to reimburse those rental payments? Um, what we've had to do is, we're luckier than some, we could um, redirect some funds that we had in our offset mortgage account um, and our savings account to compensate that shortfall. You've attached an example of one of your communications to UE about reimbursement of your accommodation expenses. You've um, attached that as Exhibit 6 to your witness statement. Uh, YOU 0001 0005 1355. That's correct. Um, when that comes up, we'll see that that's an email from the 2nd of February this year. That's right. Which you sent to David, the person you hired to deal with UE on your behalf. Correct. As well as to UE. That's right. Uh, and you attached a spreadsheet containing your accommodation expenses. I did. And we see from this email that you told Yui um, that you and your wife had to divert funds from your mortgage account and your savings account to cover the reimbursement shortfall. That's correct. Uh, and you said that this had now affected the cash flow in your business to the point where you were behind in your BAS payments and had been on a payment plan for some time. Uh, has Yui reimbursed you for the costs of moving between accommodation? Uh, no, they quite clearly said that was not in their disclosure statement. So they don't cover those costs? They don't. 
Um, uh, do they pay the bond for the accommodation or no, do you? No, that's my responsibility. Now, the cyclone occurred in March 2017 and we're in September 2018. Have the repairs to your house been completed? No, they haven't commenced. Uh, you haven't been able to move back into your house? No. All, the, all that's happened is demolition work. There's been no construction. And when do you expect to be able to move back into your house? Um, I have no idea. There is no time frame. Nobody's told me how long it's going to take. I've really got no idea. Um, has the tarpaulin on your house been replaced with a more permanent cover over the hole in the roof? Yes. When we negotiated with UWE, we were not going to use their builder. We were totally um, unhappy with the progress of their builder. They agreed to allow us to use a local builder. Uh, he came in straight away and um, replaced the tarpaulin with a, a metal roof sheet, which was sufficient to cover up the hole. And when did that occur? Uh, that happened, hmm, let me think. Um, I think it was either the end of August, uh, end of, um, let me just think for a minute, um, April, May, June, July. Yeah, it was it was around uh, around August, early August. Early August this year. That's correct. Uh, now, since UE became aware a number of months ago that you were going to give evidence in the Royal Commission, has there been a change in the way that UE has interacted with you? I must say there has been a change. Yes. What what have you observed about that change, Mr. Sutton? Um, I no longer have to chase. Um, the temporary accommodation payments. It's in fact in advance, so they're in credit until mid-November. Um, they have appointed somebody else who's been quite uh, amicable, easy to talk to, forthcoming with information. Um, I get regular updates and phone calls and emails, so um, there's been an, a remarkable change. Now, looking back over the course of your experience with UE since you made the insurance claim in March last year, how do you feel about the way your claim has been handled? Uh, it's, it's been mishandled from the beginning. It's an absolute shambles. Um, you know, you take out insurance hoping that it never happens, but if it does, you want them to have your back. You want them to know they're going to look after you, and it just didn't happen. Uh, do you think that the make safe works that were done were sufficient to protect your property from further damage? Oh, no, totally inadequate. Uh, and do you think the way that UE has handled the repairs to your house has been satisfactory? Oh, it's terrible, no. And do you think the way that UE's handled the payments for your temporary accommodation has been satisfactory? Up until now it's been atrocious. Uh, how do you feel about the way that UE treated you and your wife in the course of handling your insurance claim? Well, to be honest, we felt very bullied and very um, intimidated. We were made to um, justify everything. Um, it was almost our responsibility, and at one stage, they were, always, they were almost telling us that it was our fault for the extra delays because we had the hide to question the integrity of the builder and the roofer and the engineers. Now, uh, you will have heard me ask this same question of Ms Murphy. Can I ask you why you've decided to tell your story to the Royal Commission? Yeah, there's a lot of people in the same situation. We are just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of people going through this same thing. And whatever happens out of this whole inquiry, um, the whole thing needs to be much more transparent. There needs to be some accountability um, so that people don't have to go through this. It's just not the right. Thank you, Mr Sutton. I have no further questions. Thank you. Joe Higgins. No questions, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr Sutton. You may step down.